Hey guys, Josh here, and today I thought we'd take a look at Mastermind Creations Hexatron. Now, if you look at the name of my YouTube channel, I guess it's really no big secret that I'm a huge fan of Six Shot. I owned the toy as a kid, I own it now as a collector, and I really liked his character development throughout the Japanese Headmasters. So whenever I heard that third-party company Mastermind Creations was going to come out with their version of Six Shot, uh, he was pretty much bought. Uh, I didn't really care how much money it was going to be, I knew it was going to be kind of reasonable. But at 135 is the going rate form right now, depending on whenever you watch this. I think that price is fantastic because you get so many different things. And especially how much third-party companies are charging for their figures. You get six modes, plenty of accessories. The details on it are absolutely beautiful. And it really resembles six shot to my liking. And I do have him for comparisons in each and every mode, along with a couple of others as well. And he's actually a quite a tall figure. Uh, if you are going to display him on your third party shelf, uh, like me, and you own this guy, this is who I'm going to display him right side by side, which kind of reenacts that one scene from the Headmasters. I'll try, I'm really not going to spoil it for you guys, but Ultra Magnus and Six Shot have an epic battle. So there's basically the size comparison with them, and this is no small figure, so you can definitely tell that he's much larger. Uh, moving him to the side because I won't need him again. I uh, just want to kind of go over a little 360 rotation so you can kind of see the nice details of them. And I'll kind of zoom in a little bit better so you can get the uh, nice look at this head sculpt as well. But I have them equipped with these swords or katanas or whatever you want to call them. Uh, you can see that you've got some pink panel lining here. You've got some nice silver and black. So it really breaks up all throughout its legs. Kind of where the, the stickers and different panels on the original G1 did as well. And you can see some nice pink panel lining here on the side. Nice black throughout here. I put his guns back here just to kind of show that uh, whether you wanted to go with guns or sword, uh, he can still store, you know, whichever weapons you want. And he doesn't have to have any that's, like, left in his box. But just really nice. I love the details of this guy. Uh, there's a little... I don't know why I just showed you his butt, but um, I thought this little thing looks really nice. And you can see the tracks over here to the side as well. Uh, these little claws are going to become his flying wolf's uh, front claws or paws, whatever you like to call them. So, really nice looking figure. One thing that I did want to show you guys is on the sword, if I can get the camera to focus here for a second. There we go. I think that is. Uh, you can see the, uh, which I believe is maybe some type of Japanese. I really don't know Japanese, so I can't really tell you. Uh, but some nice detail on there. And one of the cool things with the hand... Let me get this back there. Uh, you really don't have to open the fingers or anything. Let's see, get these. Uh, go ahead and do it just so I can show you. Uh, but you can leave them all closed up. And this is something that I really like. Uh, we know that the Hasbro and Dakar, come on fingers, Jesus. Uh, that they have kind of like this little, little slot where you can like plug the weapon in and just kind of barely put his fingers around it. I actually like what they decided to do with him. Uh, make sure that's focused there as well. Uh, to where you can see this little actual curve here. So you can just slide that down. It does the same thing with the guns as well. And you don't even have to have the scripting because sometimes still the weapon falls out of the masterpiece figures. And you're not going to have that problem with this guy. And as you can still see, each one of these fingers are individually articulated. And also the thumb is on a ball joint as well. Now you don't have any articulation in each little knuckle, but that really doesn't bother me. This is perfectly fine with me. And I'm glad that they added it and just didn't do like a full clamp there. Alright. Whoops. Sorry. And I'm going to end up breaking up this or this video as you watch it. Uh, so that to make it as short as possible and do a little bit of editing. But we'll go ahead and take his swords out. I'm going to lay them to the side, but you can obviously put them in the sheath there. And I'm going to take out his guns and equip them with that, just so you can get the general idea of what he looks like. And then I'll compare them with G1. And then we'll get into the transformation. And if you're watching you know, this and you just want to see certain parts, I'll make sure that I leave down in the description you know, which mode that I'm going to at what time. That way you can just kind of skip through it if you want to do it that way. Uh, but there he is with his guns, and just absolutely magnificent. Alright, move that there. And here he is with the G1. So you can see that there's 
quite a few similarities there. Uh, definitely going to need to get some repro labels for this guy, especially here at this front part. But, um, yeah, it just looks really good. I like him. I can sit here and play with this guy for hours. So, All right, we'll move him to the side, and we will go ahead and get into the transformation. All right, guys, before we go any further, I wanted to apologize to the people that were looking for the transformation of this figure. I thought the directions were very clear-cut and easy to follow. They do a really nice job of the directions. And also, it took me about five minutes to transform them and pose them just like so. And I thought times that by six modes and talking about the figure, doing comparisons. You're looking at almost an hour-long video, and I really didn't want to put you guys through that, and I really didn't want to do all the transformations on camera either. So I thought we'd take a look at Flying Wolf here, and I'll just still break it up in the description. So if you just want to look at one individual mode, it'll be timestamped. You can just go there. So Flying Wolf, I really do like him on Hexatron. This was actually my second favorite mode on Six Shot, and I think this is probably going to be my second favorite mode on Hexatron as well. Quite a bit of articulation, which I will cover. Uh, as you can see, I put the guns or cannons here. Uh, you can also put them here at the top of the wings. There might be another spot, but this is where I always put them when I was a kid with Six Shot, and that's where they're going to go on him. Uh, but just looking at all the nice little details here at Flying Wolf, as you can see, I've got these swords and the sheaths, so you don't have to leave anything to the side. Everything will fit on him, but just really nice figure. Very beautiful, easy to transform. Uh, nothing was really too tight or too loose. Everything was just just right, which I really do enjoy about this figure. Now, as far as the articulation, uh, you can kind of see that there's this little joint here. You got a joint here, and also his neck is on a ball joint, so you can see that going back and forth. Uh, this will go up and down as well, as well with this. Uh, he's got quite a bit of nice detail here in the face. You've got the nice teeth, and his jaw will open and close as well. He's got these nice red eyes, silver on the teeth, and then he's also got some nice little silver lines. Uh, I will come in close so you can see that a little bit better. Uh, there on his ears, which I thought was a nice touch instead of just leaving it, you know, a solid white. Uh, but just nice all over, very menacing looking. And yeah, let me get that focus for you. Uh, another little thing on that. I'm not sure if this comes into play a little bit later on, but you can lift up the center claw and he's kind of got like these little two cannons or I guess he's flipping you off or whatever. Uh, you also have like kind of resemble some nice cannons here as well. Uh, and for another little added look, I didn't really like these wheels here on the inside. It doesn't say to do this in directions, but you can, you know, flip them around. And I mean, they're going to be, you know, on the back obviously, but I thought that looked a little bit better than you know just sitting there on the inside of his fist you know if you buy the figure it's yours you do however you want but uh i just wanted to kind of give a few suggestions there uh, as far as the arms or what did i say it like that arms or shoulders they're pretty much you know everything that you saw in his robot form he's able to do in this form as well uh same with the legs you know just move here you can go uh you know in and out it's hindered a little bit just because of this top section but uh, still really nice. I don't think he needs to spread his, you know, arms or front legs uh, any further than that. Uh, still, you know, rotate here. This goes up, down. This moves as well. So uh, nice posability. Uh, here in the back, you kind of have the same thing. You can do these however you want. And whenever you fold these feet up and they're like, it's kind of cool but weird little way, uh, these little bottom paws, they fold out. So let's go ahead and take a look at Hexatron. And six shot, and you can kind of see what they were going for here. I uh, wish we would have had a little bit of purple here on the back. Maybe it doesn't really serve that good a place whenever we put them in different modes, but I do dig it. I, I still love the pink panel lining. I, I think that adds so much, like a little bit of character. I wish they would have done more of it all over the place, even though you know the original didn't have it, but it gives you a pretty decent idea. I do have one more uh, little wolf here from G1, so you can kind of get an idea as far as scale goes if you don't have six shot. So this is actually a pretty nice size transformer, probably uh, today's standards, probably maybe a little bit smaller than a Voyager. And as you can see, this guy is just super big. So uh, let's go ahead and get into another one of his modes and I'll talk to you. All right, and take a look at my least favorite. This is the APC mode, which is basically some kind of military armored car, 
but it was my least favorite on six shot as well especially growing up as a kid i just always thought it was a little a little bit lame and it seemed like something that they just kind of uh, you know, they only had five modes, but they just kind of, oh, if we move this, this here and add some wheels, then we got ourselves a car. And I think that's kind of what they did because it doesn't look like it was planned. It really doesn't look like anything in my opinion, but you can kind of see how they have the guns up here. And with the sword sheets, they kind of use those to make them look like they're more guns or cannons or something like that. But let's take a look at him with the original. This is what I was kind of talking about. Uh, it doesn't really look like anything. You got these wings that kind of flare out to the side. Uh, I did used to always close this up I know you're not supposed to but uh, I kind of used it like his battering ram mode or something like that so I thought that was kind of cool but uh, sticking to what they intended it to look like as you can see the guns up here the wings these will go forward where these ones will go back but it's all right I guess uh, I don't like it though if you like it fine but he does have several other things that are really awesome so we'll get to those here in a second but just wanted to show this off just because it is one of his modes. Now taking a look at the Cybertronian gun mode, I have to say this thing shattered my expectations. I was expecting this to be one of those modes where they just kind of cut corners and maybe didn't do it justice and do it right, but they did a fantastic job with this. Uh, one thing I'd like to do real quick before we get into it is flip these little guys open uh, or just kind of put them together. You can do however you like. And that's how I always did the original G1 just because I thought it was a little flat and it kind of added something to it. But whenever I was transforming this thing, there were panels on here that I wasn't even aware that would move or open, like these little two right here. And until I got into the transformation, I'm looking at the directions, and I'm like, oh, crazy, I never noticed that. So, you know, those little things. Also, there were places down here to where it was like, well, those will connect. I never noticed that there was a little peg and a hole there, so uh, I wasn't really sure what it was going to go to. I think it turned out really good. The one negative that I do have is... Um, you know, the handles, a little too small. And that kind of goes back to the problem that I had previously to where I think the wings are too short. If they were a little bit longer, the handle would be better and also the wings would be better. I think it'd be a, a better overall figure. So maybe some third-party company will come out with just, you know, longer wings there. Uh, but looks really good. I like the way that the colors all mash together. I can see that I'm going to keep on talking about this uh pink uh, on here because I think it really adds to the figure which they would have done more pink in here maybe some around here as well but on um, there you can see some as well uh, instead of having the guns on the interior like the original G1 you can see that it kind of used the sword sheets here which I, I hope that's how you call it I've been saying that the whole video but uh, I think that's how you pronounce it uh, but you got the guns here uh, now showing you with the original G1 and hopefully I can get all this on screen that's a it's a lot of transformers right there but you can see what I was talking about with the front ends uh, here on the side uh, this this is far superior than the G1 and you never really hear me say things like that you kind of see what I'm talking about here with the handle uh, there's the back and I'm just gonna do this just because that's the way it always has looked to me but fantastic gun mode uh, mastermind creations you all did yourself here uh, so far, this figure is already worth that 135 that I paid, but we still have, I believe, two more modes to go, so I will be back with you. Now we're taking a look at the Starfighter mode, and this thing looks great. Uh, this is probably my third favorite mode when I was a kid growing up with Six Shot, and that's probably the same with this one. I, I still like the Flying Wolf just a little bit more than this, uh, but man, does it really look good. Uh, I'm going to compare it here with the G1 here in a minute, but... I wanted to just show you all the quick details. Now this transformation is very similar to that of the gun. The part that you're moving the most other than, you know, this being the handle and now it becomes the wings. Again, wish those were a little bit longer like the G1, but I'll settle for this. This looks really good. Uh, you're going to spin this section around basically so that instead of these guns on top, now they're at the bottom. And I think it looks, I think it was worth it. Uh, there's a couple of little pieces that you have to move over so that you can get everything turned around correctly. But not too bad. Uh, I do dig those cannons down there at the bottom where you know things that hold the sword. It's really good. You definitely see this as some type of spaceship or uh, jet or something. So uh, let me grab the G1 so you can see them side by side. And there they are, and that's what they were basically going after. I know this, now looking at the G1, this kind of looks like it's some kind of boat like if you didn't see the wings uh, I could definitely see this being some kind of like uh, you know boat but man they look good together 
I'd like to have like two big stands that I could just display them this way, uh, right side by side. I really do dig it that much. But you can definitely see what they were going for. Instead of having these way back here, uh, you know, all this that folds up, you know, today's technology uh, really helps out. It makes it look better overall. But next is going to be the tank, and then we'll be done, guys. And finally, taking a look at the tank mode. I gotta say, it's not my favorite, but it's definitely not the worst. It looks a lot like the original G1, so that's something I can definitely appreciate. I do like the guns up here because it resembles the G1. Let me go ahead and grab it so you can see it side by side and know what I'm talking about. Uh, to where the guns are up here, but I do like what they did with these source sheets where they kind of set them over here to the side like they're doing with all the modes to where they look, kind of look like cannons. Another thing that they did is they incorporated the swords here on the side to where they slide in to where I guess they kind of look like they're, you know, guns shooting and stuff like that. But take a little 360 at both of them together, and I like this little compartment up here uh, versus, you know, just the little mouth that flips down for whenever he's in his flying wing mode in G1. But looks really good. Uh, like I said... Just like the G1, transformation is pretty much the exact same as well. But uh, there's the back. Not really a whole lot to look at there. And there you go. I don't believe it had any wheels at the bottom. No, so just track there. It would have been nice if we could have got a little bit something, but it probably would have took away in some other area. But I will give you my final thoughts, and we'll be right back. All right, before we finish up with the final thoughts, so there were a couple of things that I forgot to mention whenever he was in robot mode. One is he comes with six of these little shurikens, and they're basically just the wheel cover, and you fold them up and pop them on there. I've been looking in the box trying to find these, and I finally discovered that it's his wheel. So really cool idea. Something they didn't really have to give us, but they went ahead and did anyways. I think you get a ton of accessories. Six of these, two guns, two swords. Uh, even the detail on those is really nice as well. But basically just shut the that thing up and then it will just pop here on the side here there you go and you also have them you know up here and on this other wheel here now i did want to cover the articulation but another little bonus feature that i wanted to show you is the head and they did something kind of a little funny with it uh i like his head sculpt the way that it is is the way he looked in the anime and the g1 toy uh but you can pull what seems to be his helmet and you can see little hextron's face there and he's got some facial features I uh, don't remember him having this in the anime, or maybe it was in some comic, I'm not really sure. Maybe it's Mastermind Creation just giving us a little bit more of that detail. Uh, I could dig it. I'm not ever going to display them like that. I like this way, but uh, it is there, you know, if you want it. Now, as far as the articulation, I did want to cover that before we end. Uh, he does have quite a bit of movement here in the head, so a nice ball joint there. The wings, they can go whichever way if you wanted to maybe... Do him like that to where he's in some kind of flying motion. Uh, I just like to keep it anime style with him kind of straight up and right behind his back. Uh, this section I'm going to just close it for the meantime so I don't poke myself or break anything. The shoulder has a nice joint here. It can go 360. Also goes in and out as you can see quite a bit there. Uh, you also have, let me pull this back so you can see a little bit better. You can rotate at this point or at this point. So this will rotate here or it will rotate down here. You also have 90 degree bend. If you pull this back, then you can bend back some as well. I'm going to go ahead and snap that back into place. I already showed you each individual finger. You do have wrist ball joints and that can go in and out a little there. The waist is a little bit tricky. Now these two independent are independent, excuse me, and they can move on their own. So you can kind of position those however you like. But the top section here, make sure I got that pulled out. The top torso, if you hold the bottom, it can rotate independently on its own. Then the bottom can rotate on its own as well. If I can get it to do it here, I don't have enough hands. There we go. So, as you can kind of see there. So, really, really cool. Uh, the legs, you can go forward, back, pretty common. You can go quite a bit over here to the side. They rotate here at the thigh. You have a little bit more than 90 degree bend. And the feet, they can go back, you know, forth, and they can also tilt as well. So I guess the question is, do I recommend this guy? I mean, you guys should probably know just by watching the video. But I gotta say, especially for 135, I think he's a great figure. 
Uh, he definitely looks awesome on your shelf. And, you know, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, he definitely needs some ripper labels, uh, in my opinion, so that you can actually, you know, make a little bit of extra stuff here and here, maybe some stuff here, uh, add a little bit of detail there. But even if you just keep him like this, I think he looks fantastic. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hopefully this helped you out. Wanted to kind of give you an in-depth look at Six Shot and Hexatron side-by-side. -side. And have a good day.